In the mid 80s, truckloads of toxic sludge were sent from Sweden to a small town in northern Chile. They put it in a big pile, and then kids started playing on it. Cancer rates exploded, families died, and an entire community was forever fucked. The whole thing would have been swept under the rug if it wasn't for these filmmakers who brought the story into the international spotlight. When we first came to Chile in 2004, we had no idea that toxic waste from our hometown had been sent there. I went to Chile mostly because I'm from there. I uh, hadn't done any really anything connected to film or, or anything and prior to going to Chile. I just really saw it as an opportunity to go there and get to know the country. So I met William. And then we made a first like short about this subject. Corría el año 2005 cuando nos conocimos con Lors y William a Canarica. Y yo trabajaba como antropólogo. Yo estaba haciendo una investigación. Yo quería saber exactamente cuáles eran los efectos. Porque la contaminación es un, es un peligro que acecha y que no se ve. Este es un tema que nos ha, ha tocado muy profundamente. Así que no solamente es un trabajo, sino también es una causa. When our first film, Toxic Playground, was released in 2009, we were overwhelmed. It was screened all over the world. There were news editorials, big debates. We even had a screening in the Swedish parliament. We really felt that we had given a voice to the people of Arica. He sentó acá en Arica a través de la televisión local tuvo mucho impacto porque era un tema muy muy desconocido si bien se sabía que había un grado de contaminación de una comunidad pero no se sabía de los alcances hubo harto harto trabajo periodístico acá sobre todo los canales de televisión de Chile que querían mostrar la, las implicancias las consecuencias de, de cuando una comunidad se, fue, se ve expuesta a una contaminación por metales pesados en paralelo el gobierno chileno por fin reconocía la contaminación a Canarica, cuestión que se había negado por más de 11 años. But in Sweden nothing happened. Not from the Swedish government, not from from Bolivia. Uh, but then two years afterwards in 2011, an environmental lawyer called us up and uh, he said that that uh, they were going to sue Bolivia and that we could follow this from the inside. I mean that was so amazing. Finally, justice could come to, to Sweden as well. Det är så att jag tillsammans med ett antal kollegor här i Sverige, i Chile och i USA har tittat på det här en, en tid. Och vi har eh, jobbat fram ett utkast till sändningsansökan på Boliden. Nunca se había considerado en Chile cierto por parte de especialistas, por parte de expertos, de abogados sobre todo, que se pudiese perseguir la responsabilidad de, de la empresa Boliden y sobre todo hacerlo en tribunales suecos. Es un tremendo logro que una película pueda ser capaz de, de llegar, cierto, empujar. Ese juicio entregaba un, un gran mensaje, no solamente para Arica o Chile, sino también para muchas comunidades en el mundo que las responsabilidades se, se pueden perseguir a pesar que sean en distancia muchos años. To make the second film Arica was really a challenge. Even from an investigative journalist's perspective, the subject was complicated in so many ways, legal, technical, scientific. Ja, genom filmen så är vi vi är ju redan kända parter i det här liksom vart vi står och hur vi har varit aktiva i detta liksom. At the same time we needed to follow the journalistic compass and make very, very sure that we didn't do anything that affected the ongoing legal case. Vi kommer ju prata ganska mycket om tekniska avvägningar. Det kan många gånger vara extremt känsligt. Det kan vara moraliskt känsligt, det kan vara etiskt känsligt, det kan vara känsligt en jävla massa olika perspektiv. Och oerhört spännande ur ett filmstöd. Och oerhört spännande, och det är ju det som står mot varandra. 
I'm a human rights lawyer and I've spent the last 20 years working with victims of mass atrocities and man-made disasters. We could see straight away that there was a massive fit between Ellie's justice work and the potential impact of the new film. So we submitted it to Good Pitch, which is an initiative where films about important issues can connect to potential partners. Given the scale of the problem, we knew that we had to come up with an impact campaign that was really ambitious, but also achievable. And by the end of 2018, we built some really strong ideas and we had a campaign strategy designed around three goals or pillars of justice, prevention, reparation and accountability. And we wanted to make changes in Chile, Sweden and also internationally. Of course, we really needed to raise money, but Good Pitch also really helped kickstart the process of building the partnerships that we would need. A key partner for this goal was the Basel Action Network. They've dedicated their working lives to regulating the trade in international toxic waste. And for the last 20 years or so, they've been working on something called the Ban Amendment that would effectively make the movement of hazardous waste from the developed to the developing world illegal. We knew that we could do some smart strategic screenings. And Ban invited us to show Toxic Playground, the trailer of Arika, and to hold discussions at the United Nations. The ban amendment had fallen off the agenda for the next meeting of states, and after the screening and the Q&A, it was reinstated. And not long after that, they got the last two signatures to get the amendment over the line, so for all states who are party to the convention, the movement of hazardous waste is now illegal under international law. We can't take all the credit so many campaigners were involved, but we were proud to play a small part in helping to push an internationally legally binding treaty over the line after 24 years. So the justice goal here was about empowerment and giving voice to the people in Arica, the people who call themselves the polymetal communities. Queremos justicia. Justicia. But by this time, the context was changing radically. There were massive protests against the government right across Chile, and then came COVID. When the COVID, it had a great impact on the community of polymetales because Hay que pensar que esta comunidad es una comunidad que, que es muy vulnerable en salud. Presentamos un recurso de protección aquí ante tribunales chilenos para la ONA de vía protección. Now there were urgent needs to respond to, so we supported the community to set up a solidarity kitchen, and that then became a food distribution collective, and that led to a community gardening project to grow more healthy food, and then a new initiative with universities in Chile and America to develop community-based kits for testing toxins in soil. Es el cementerio sueco de Boliden. Boliden puso el cementerio y nosotros hemos puesto los muertos. Hemos creado la Fundación Arica para la Democracia Ambiental, cuestión o acción que creo que es fundamental La toma de decisiones cuando se cuenta con la información adecuada y oportuna. And finally, we completed the film and we're proud to play at many international film festivals around the world. We even got into IDFA, which was always our dream. But due to COVID, only 30 people could attend the premiere. But even if we couldn't be there ourselves, we invited the Swedish and Chilean ambassador, which helped with the next goal. Our third goal was to ensure that the actions of Boliden would receive the necessary scrutiny. The film actually ends with Rodrigo taking a letter to the Swedish ambassador in Chile. 
Para que exista una justicia plena, debería el Estado sueco con el Estado chileno sacar algo en plan, o sea, dar una respuesta, dar una solución. En el año 2019, en octubre, por fin, logramos que el señor embajador sueco en Chile viniera a Arica, conociera in situ el tema, eh, conversara con los representantes de las comunidades. Dos temas que eran principales. Uno es el retorno de los tóxicos a Suecia, porque hoy día los tenemos acá en un sector que se llama Quebra Encantada, aquí mismo eh, en la ciudad. Y, y el otro objetivo era, o es, que se pueda crear un centro de salud de alta especialización. After the ambassador had visited, he said that he would inform his colleagues in Stockholm. Nunca más tuvimos una respuesta. Así que eh, entendimos aquí como proyecto que era importante llevar esta, este tema, este caso, a, a la ONU. Y, y nos dirigimos una nota de queja ante el relator de, de derechos humanos para sustancias tóxicas. By the time the new film was complete, we'd had almost two years of working with the help of partners submitting communications to various mechanisms at the United Nations. And they took up our case. So in March 2021, a group of UN experts from the Human Rights Council sent letters alleging human rights abuses in Arica caused by the dumping of toxic waste. And those letters went to the governments of Sweden and Chile and directly to Bulidin itself. At the time of the dumping, Sweden had the duty to ensure local authorities received adequate information. But the Chilean authorities received false information. The application for importation literally reads that the wastes are not toxic. Unfortunately, the consequences of Sweden's wrongful acts have been disastrous for the people of Arica. In our letters, we urge Sweden and Chile to cooperate to put an end to this environmental catastrophe. Sweden should promptly repatriate and dispose of the wastes in an environmentally sound manner. And the victims should receive effective remedies, including adequate health care. After the UN report, there was a motion passed by senators in Chile and also questions in the Swedish parliament. We have so much own sanitation work to do, and it also means that we develop techniques and solutions. And there we are, of course, ready to assist Chile if we should need such help. There were firework celebrations in Arica. It was even featured on the biggest satirical show in Sweden. So it's now a really well-known case. We're proud to have been part of this project. I think it's a project that really shows that it's, it's worth fighting for a more just world, even though it may feel like it's an almost impossible task. But we're not there yet. The waste is still in Eureka, and people there are still getting sick. Este trabajo que, que tenemos acá, como, acá en Eureka como comunidad. Yo diría que lo voy a resumir en, en, en una palabra que, que es marichihuevo. No es una palabra de la lengua mapuche, es el pueblo indígena chileno. Significa lucharemos, trabajaremos por siempre, incansablemente. Aunque pasen mil años, seguiremos trabajando. Sí.